What is your content strategy game plan for your business in 2024? Because the reality is, is you shouldn't just be posting and crossing your fingers. That's not a strategy. And I actually want to help you. What would you say to someone that's like, editing is my biggest thing. I don't want to pay for an editor. I don't want to do it myself. Like, what do I do? If I wanted to do bare minimum content creation and still be effective, well, here's how I would do it. Number one, we're excited for this special year end podcast where we're going to be breaking down essentially our content strategy here at the department or the video department. And I have with me Art Mosqueda. Let's go. AKA Let's go. not my son or my yeah. younger brother. Um, and then we have Abigail hey. Norman, oh, wait, newest hire, her? newest team member. Yeah. Yes. I'm excited. Um, yeah. Abigail is the uh, creative assistant and studio manager for the video department here in Las Vegas. And then we have Art, who actually is the creative director, lead editor. If you've been loving the podcast edits and the intros, that man is a beast. Um, but I just first, before we get into it, my goodness, the department podcast is popping. I don't know. I mean, I don't think we expected this, honestly, right? No. If you know, I know some people have watched through a lot of the episodes so far, but if you haven't, I just wanted to create one high quality piece of content using the relationships I've built. And so all these guests that you've seen, I've actually, I actually know them, which has been really cool. And um, it's just been awesome. Episode 10 with Shalene Johnson went absolutely insane. I'm excited to have her back for a part two. Um, but I didn't really intend for this to go crazy. And um, I'm just grateful. Thank you for listening and watching however you consume the podcast. And I, I couldn't imagine it being this awesome. It's actually shifted a lot of what the focus will be going into 2024. Because this was kind of like a, I don't know, like a fun, something fun to do that also had some business logic to it. Yeah. But I really want this to be a priority next year. Um, planning on taking like week long trips uh, to certain cities and then just batching a lot of conversations with people I know that are doing awesome things. People who are killing it in their department. Yeah. But just real quick, let's just read some stats because, like, I don't know, I'm just proud of these. Um, so your channel, which is Omar El Takori, but we host his podcast on it, um, it has 268,000 views in the past 60 days. It's insane. So that's crazy. There's 60,000 like, watch hours. Okay, let me break that down real quick because because a lot of this is going to help you as we break down the content game plan for your business. So you said 260,000 views. I think everyone yes. would raise your hand and say, I would like 260,000 views. Okay. Yes. I know a lot of a lot of that gets people excited, the views. I would say the next stat is actually more exciting. But here's what's cool about those views is that because these podcasts are over an hour long or about an hour long, those are quality views. Those are people like really hanging out with you. But all yeah. that to say... The, the next one that you mentioned just, is 60,000 watch hours. That's the freaking stat. Yes. This is the stat that I want you to grow next year. Yeah. It, and it says 59K more than usual. So. <laughs> I know. Um, but watch hours. Why does this matter? This matters because if you do that math, 60,000. Yeah, 60,000. So it's 60,000 watch hours. We can multiply that. I hope I do this right. By... Uh, Divide that by 24 and then divide that by 365. So that's 3,900, 3,945 days. Jeez. That's how many days um, people have spent hanging out with me. And if you don't know about this rule is there's this rule, it's the rule of seven. And it's usually this, when somebody meets you online, it takes them about seven hours for them to trust you especially with people who have, you know, higher ticket items and things like that. Obviously, if you're a local business owner uh, and it's an easier transaction, it makes more sense. But if you're, if you do anything online, it's like the, that's, that's so, so I, I've hacked time. This is why I'm passionate about teaching entrepreneurs content is because you actually get to uh, multiply your time. And, you know, as a busy individual, you don't have to grind the content game and, you know, you right. can actually just, you know, do some strategic things once a week or twice a month, and it can really uh, multiply yourself. And I, I think that's the image that I want you to get. I want you to multiply yourself with the videos you're going to put out online, whether it's, you know, Instagram, TikTok, or whatever, especially YouTube. And so that you can experience that powerful stat of 60,000 watch hours. Yeah. 
And then you grew 7,000 subscribers, uh, which is cool. Um, but talk about this for a second, because I think this is like a big piece of it. Um, in the past two months, you've made uh, six grand off of YouTube. And this is from the podcast. So in November, we made $2,100. Uh, and then in December, we made $5,400 yeah, off of the podcast. Sweet. Yeah, I actually never encourage people to make the Google AdSense their number one goal. Right. But heck, how cool is it that if you're marketing for your business, because this mm -hmm. the podcast markets my business, I'm a content coach for entrepreneurs, that that pays for me to run my business. 100. Like, you know, you know it, that because I'm advertising, that it allows, uh, it, it's just, I, I there has never been a time where that was the case, right? You know, if you would do billboards or things, you know, maybe on television, you're not getting paid to market. So I think we're living in a time where you want to make content a priority. Yep. Abby, say something. <laughs> <laughs> I just see her looking at me. Um, your hand's in the shop, by the way, every time you go That's like That's cool. This. Whatever. I yeah. don't know what to say. No. <laughs> Uh, I can ask you a question. This is the Gen Z department. The oh, yeah, Gen by the Z way, department. you know, I, I was going to do this solo, <laughs> but I was going to invite the team because I think I th I'm passionate about building up people and I've hired younger people because I want to influence the future. Yeah. And so, yeah, Abby, how old are you right now? 20. 20. Let's go. She looks 20. I'm 21. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I'm, I'm well, they want to look, no, 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 look no. older. I'm I 21. Look I don't look 21. So the fact that you look 20 is actually, I'm jealous, but whatever. People tell me I look 15. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get the same vibe. No, but all I, I have get to 13, say, 12. Here's what's cool about the AdSense on the, the YouTube channel is uh, most, what, it's called CPM. All right. I yep. want people to take notes. It's called CPM. This yep. is cost per milli. This is, it says cost per milli, like it's a dance move or something, <laughs> like a milli wop. But it, for every 1,000 views on YouTube, you get paid out something, you know, once your channel is monetized. And on average, an average YouTuber is going to be about 3 to $6. That's like an average YouTuber's uh, CPM. Uh, the department or my this YouTube channel, the average CPM is about $22 per 1,000 views, which is very powerful. And that's because... Uh, a lot of the conversations are entrepreneurial or about business um, marketing. And so the ads that get placed on my videos are a little bit more, um, I guess, more premium, I guess you could say. So it's so all been good. It's been good. Yeah. So, yeah. The podcast has been amazing. So. Podcast has been amazing. And we ain't stopping. We ain't stopping. 2024 guests about to be insane. Yeah. So let's run it. Who's yeah. next? Huh? Who's next? Who's I believe, I believe the next few, I got, I got. I, um, I'm going to have Matt Bontrager coming up, who is nice. my tax CPA person. That's, who's that's gonna brilliant. Cool. He's yeah. he's good at like speaking today's language when mm -hmm. it comes to tax strategies. Um, and then uh, we have Shalene Johnson coming back for nice. a part two. Part two. Out. And then I'm kind of just going with the flow. I'd like to go in Orange County and we have some uh, entrepreneur friends. Actually, uh, me and Art are wearing shoes from a brand called Collegium. I don't know if they'll be able to see them. <laughs> but uh, the the owner of this brand, I think, I think an eight-figure you know, clothing or sneaker brand and would love to interview the owner of that. His name's Nick. Such a tight brand. Like, yeah. so cool. All right. So I, I do want to tell you the strategy that I believe every entrepreneur can actually implement this coming year if you just give it some time. Okay. This is a, a type of strategy that is, it's for busy people. It's a type of strategy it for people who are good at what they do. And I think if I would imagine that you're frustrated because you're really good at what you do, but nobody knows you. And we're in a game where it's all about who is known, not who is best, right? It's, um, it, and, I, and I used to be there, right? Um, but I've been able to help a lot of people and I've been able to put out a lot of content and, and help a lot of people get the feedback of people who are just like, man, I, if you dislike somebody online because they're killing it in your industry or lane, you know, 2024 is the year to actually make your mark in your industry and I believe it's going to be done with these outputs. Now, I want to tell, say this before I get into it, that you can control your outputs, right? But you can't control your outcomes. That's good. And this is why I just committed to uploading a podcast a week. That was my committed output goal. One podcast a week. Now, the outcome, you, you just got to leave it up and see what happens and then readjust. But, but I'm, not, I'm not 
I'm not falling. I, as you can say, like Art pulled out the stats and stuff. I'm like, cool. We still got to move on. We still got to like the next episode. We got to get up. You know, <laughs> like we got to get another interview. So I'm more committed to the outputs, and I want to encourage you with that because you can get it can get very, uh, you know, tiring if if that's all you're looking yeah. at. You're looking at your low views. You're looking, but if you can just commit for an entire year. I, I believe your life will actually change. I would actually say that's why we've gotten the results that we have. Yeah. Is because you you were just committed. Because the first few episodes weren't like crazy with views. Yeah. So So yeah. I would I would encourage you to think through your pre decision. Like I'm gonna give you this this kind of like format and layout of what you're gonna be able to do this next year. And I want you to pre decide. Pre decide net right now that you are going to lock in and do this. Because your life will look different a year from now. My life is completely different from a year and a half ago since I've been, I would say around two years now, I've been building my personal brand and the relationships it's brought me, the financial increase it's bought me, the, um, the opportunities that it's brought me. It, it's, it's insane. And I would attribute it all to just showing up consistently online. Okay. Yep. So, so let's quick, get into it. Real this. quick, real quick. What? So you're not saying that people need to like make a podcast they just have to be consistent online because even before I was on the team and everything, I saw your growth on social media and your consistency. So would you say that that's like the number one thing that completely transformed everything for you? Because the podcast is how many months old? Uh, we months started old, right? uh, in September. Yeah. So it's not that old. And I, and I would say, that I, I mean, some people know that I, I'm a content creator for a channel called Think Media and um, I produce tutorials for that channel there is a overflow or a spill effect that happens. I imagine that people meet me with like a tech review tutorial or something. And so they meet me on Instagram. But yeah, this is the, and I, this is why I wanted to break down this strategy because it's uh, it'll help you be consistent. I think I had things that allowed me to be consistent and maybe I overlooked that. But yeah, it is it's just consistency is it. I would I like to say it like this the way you're going to build your brand or the way people will f feel about your brand, it's going to be by consistency. And then from, from the interpretation of what comes consistently is what actually, what, how people feel about your brand. But yeah, if you're not hitting, you know, whatever the output goals are consistently, then, you know, you, you lose. <laughs> Sorry, that's intense. <laughs> but isn't it crazy? How, like, cause you saw me not be so consistent. And then it was like, mm -hmm. oh, he turned up the heat. And it's like, boom, this yeah. dude is growing. Yeah, she like yeah. watched you like rise on your Instagram personal brand when like you were crushing those side angle profile coach calls. Yeah. I did. So let's go through these weekly outputs. And I want you guys to help me break through some limiting beliefs or maybe legitimate obstacles. I'm just gonna lay it out right up front. Let's okay. Do it. So I'm gonna Number one is you're going to post one long form video to YouTube. That's just number one. This is, what do you mean long form video, Omar? What's a long form? I would say anywhere between eight minutes or more. You when it, when it comes to long form videos, you definitely want to make it as short as possible, but as long as necessary. So you determine that, use your, use your um, intuition, but at least an eight minute video minimum uploaded to YouTube weekly. And this should actually get your energy, your effort. This is important, right? The long video is very important because this is how people really get to know you. And it's gonna influence the other things that I'm gonna break down. So one long form video upload to YouTube, uh, and then one to three audio podcasts. So I do think that because you're uploading a long form video to YouTube, that you should take that audio at minimum and upload it to an audio distributor. Okay, and we'll go into details. Then we're gonna have seven to 10 Instagram reels. I'm a millennial and I'm not too keen on TikTok right now. It's okay, I don't. I feel like I don't need to be. You know, somebody DM me and was like, yo, why don't you just post on your stuff everywhere? I'm like, because I like to still be, and this might be a limiting belief, but in control of posting, you know, it's me. It's me posting my reels, like the captions, that's me. The, yeah. uh, the, 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 short the video selection that's me and so i want people to feel that and i think it's important if you care about intentionality uh, because i just saw like on a text thread that i'm in with a bunch of entrepreneurs they were like hey i need a va so they could just post for me and that's cool but like just it's getting noisy and it, and you're, you're not really gonna control that noise by your va just like slapping yeah. every clip on every platform that's not 
contextualized right um for that very platform no you can legitimately tell like right. I, like i have a few that come to mind that just like you can tell like it's not them it's some team member. don't say them because they're on the t- they're on this, <laughs> this podcast on other episodes no but it's and i get it it's a volume play but i want to pl- i want you to play the quality play because okay. quality will last always um 20 instagram stories a week and we'll break that down i think Instagram stories is going to be your biggest best friend for the easiest way to be consistent because there's no sacred cows with Instagram stories. They go away in 24 hours. And then at minimum about about five emails a week. And I want to break down how we're going to achieve this with very little input. So little input, heavy output, and then pray awesome outcome, you know? (laughs) All right, so let's break down this long form video real quick. So long form video uploaded to YouTube. Um, For me, this will be a video podcast show where we do interview style. Sometimes there'll be a solo episode. um, But for the most part, this is going to be the way I'm going to get this long form video. Now, a lot of people will get stuck with the um, obstacles of editing Mm-hmm. you know, uh, probably being able to talk for a long period of time. I think a yeah. lot of people, you know, can do a, a really awesome three tip reel, but can you expand, yeah. expand on it? Maybe that's the skill that you want to grow in this coming year is the skill of communication, just being able to communicate for a longer period of time around your subject matter expertise. But this long form video to YouTube, if, if editing is in your way, I want you to stop editing your videos, like just straight up. Um, yep. our podcast isn't really edited. Like I'm, I keep this clean. Like literally, this conversation, we didn't even have a real intro. It, I just started with two enrolling questions. Which, by the way, it's a very smart way to start a YouTube video. Just start asking two questions about your video that you're going to deliver. But we just gonna, we're using AI to cut up this conversation. So nobody's switching right now. Yep. We're just going to throw this into Premiere Pro, hit go, and then it's going to cut it all up. We're going to export it, upload it to YouTube, and we're going to have an output right? A weekly output. But here, here's what I think, what else you can do. Okay. Number one, it doesn't have to be an hour long. Number two, uh, you can use a a whiteboard. You can use um, a vibe board. You can share the screen to your computer and like, just give a presentation. I think some people underestimate the power of what a presentation can do. And people even at the highest level are crushing it with this to include Alex Ramosi. Like the dude's, what his best performing videos a lot of the times are literal presentations. Right. And so this is why I encourage you to to just go for the long form thing because there is a lot of people that don't want the short version of something. They want to actually learn. They want you know whatever it is. If you're if you're in the real estate in- industry, they want to learn what their money is going to do. They want to learn about the new loan programs. They want to learn where they should live. Like learning isn't. Uh, you, you know, to speed learning isn't really effective. And so you have the benefit of human nature who people still want to watch people, you know, explain things for a long time. Right. I mean, I just yeah. think that people want like the fine details. Yeah. They want more transparent content because that like comes with long form. Yeah. Um, I mean, one example is Sam Selleck. He's like the man right now. But yeah, he has long form content and he blew up literally just posting long form and he yeah. doesn't even focus on short form. It's like his fans that make it. Yeah. So it's yeah. Really cool. Long yeah. Form, it's the move. And keep it simple. Like you, you never see me throw in, we never throw in these Instagram handles on my thing. Nope. We, you never see nope. me throw in a subscribe button, that little, little, little button click, click, <laughs> click. Ding. Like, I just don't. <laughs> I mean, honestly, none of our edits are crazy. No, like, they're not. You're very like, I mean, you like to keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then, and then, and then if, if you wanted to start a podcast and you wanted an intro, I would just say, just keep the intro aligned with what the video is about. Don't right. make it random and keep it short. Yeah. You know, I like, we usually try to keep it under I guess 60 that seconds. like the heavy part that we do Yeah, is our intros, which are crazy. But yeah. But I, I mean, I would, I would say if that is a hurdle though, you yeah. don't have to do it. 100. So then because we're uploading this one long video to YouTube, Export that audio file and upload it to an audio podcast platform. Okay, so, um, and let me, I'll tell you why in just a second. What's cool about putting it on audio podcast platform, number one is it syndicates it, meaning it's going to put it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and all you had to do was export the video or the audio, which 
we just I just found out a couple of weeks ago that YouTube has the RSS feed now. You know what yeah. RSS feed is? It's just the audio. Yeah. But the RSS feed is for podcasting. Um, you want to, you connect it to your various podcast platforms. But I believe if you upload a video to YouTube now and you just connect your RSS feed to your Apple, that it's going to just syndicate it, the video for you. I believe. Nice. So uh, I'll double check on that. It still seems early. Um, yeah. But there's not too many features, but I think it's possible. So it might even do the work for you. Um, and so uploading this audio podcast is powerful because when somebody becomes subscribed to an audio podcast, they become a, they become a connoisseur of that podcast. And so even though the numbers on YouTube are very exciting that we're experiencing, I get really excited about the, I think it's on average about a thousand people right now who click on the audio uh, on podcasts and listen to the audio, listen to the conversation yeah. uh, audibly. And, and the retention rate is crazy. Yeah, and that's why. Because nobody's clicking on an hour-long podcast and trying to be convinced necessarily. They're like, no, I'm at the gym. I'm going to press it. No, I'm on my way to work. I'm going to press it. Right. No, I'm on, my, I'm on my way home from work. I'm going to press it. So, Or Amanda, my wife, she's cooking. By the way, this is my baby's due date right yeah. now. So my baby, <laughs> shooting like, a <laughs> I know I'm shooting a podcast and my son could be born in any moment. Um, it's crazy. Uh, Omar, you're But you're Amanda's nuts. doing good. She's chilling right now, though. Yeah. So. So I was like, I'm, let me just smack this uh, podcast real quick. So, yes, don't miss the opportunity of uploading the audio portion with that minimal work. And this is something someone else can do. Once you shoot the video, just export the audio as well. Upload it to an audio syndication. We use Red Circle. I like it. And here's why I like it. Because it's so easy to put um, description. Uh, or uh, I'm sorry. Dynamic insertions. Dynamic insertions. And so if you don't know what that is, or explain what a dynamic insertion so, is. So on Red Circle, I, a dynamic insertion is like a piece of audio that you can insert at any point of the podcast, um, and it's like super easy. So like if you have an ad read, um, you can insert it with ease, and like that's it. And it like does the work for you essentially with like um, stopping and starting and all that stuff. So we've had a couple on a few episodes and it's so easy to like pause them and like activate them. Yeah. So, so you could do timely ads, right? So yeah. like if you have something coming up, you don't have to remember to say it inside of your recording. Mm -hmm. You can literally shoot it later or record it on your phone later. And right. you literally have this like time sensitive ad that you can throw in or throw out or, yeah. Uh, but that's a dynamic insertion, which red circle makes that easy. I know mm -hmm. other platforms can do it too. Um, and then we're going to hook up the description in the show notes, right? Like, yep. you know, I, I, I make sure I put links in the description to things that are pertinent for the, the listener, uh, a little bit of a short description of what that long form video is about. But I want you in 2024 to upload at least one long form video to YouTube. And it's okay. Dude, if you're not getting views, it's okay. Use the season for discovery. Use the season for um, you know, learning, use the season for yourself, like just show up for yourself for the first bit. And I promise you over the next few weeks, as time goes on, you're giving yourself another shot every week by being able to stick to that upload schedule. And so, um, we want to upload this one long video to YouTube a week. And then, uh, we, we really talked about podcasts. I, I say one to three episodes, a week because the given is the long form video upload like we just talked. And the one way you can grow your podcast uh, is actually just upload, you know, special, you know, maybe short, shorter kind of thoughts or you can upload uh, just um, exclusive audio only conversations or something like that. You know, you, I hope I hope you hear this. Like you don't have to overthink the audio thing. And, you know, what's funny is people a lot of times ask me about starting a video podcast and it's so much it could be so much work up front especially yeah. with the gear you want something yeah. that could you know not not overheat or whatever you want to make sure the audio sounds good and then if you don't if you don't know how to edit you gotta learn how to edit a little bit but if i said usually i say hey what if it wasn't a video podcast like what if you just had an audio podcast well if that was the case that'd be so easy i don't even need to show up on well then just do the audio podcast you yeah. know um but i'm going to utilize uh, cause I want to grow the audio audience as well. So I'll be uploading, uh, strategic and exclusive content. One being, 
uh, a separate conversation I did with Myron Golden, uh, which I'll upload. Actually, we'll just upload it. It's a yeah. conversation about YouTube. So if you want to get more insight about YouTube and how uh, my business coach, Myron Golden, kind of blew up in the last year and a half, we'll upload that. That'll be on the audio podcast. See, that's a call to action right now. Yep. You can click the link, subscribe to the department on wherever you listen to audio podcasts and get that special conversations about 35 minutes of straight fire when it comes to youtube strategy super solid episode super, super solid. solid so so we're gonna upload one to youtube one to three to audio one's already a given so you didn't do any extra work and this is what's awesome about this whole content strategy i'm breaking down then is the next the next thing is the instagram uh you know outputs and i mentioned seven to ten reels a week now here's where we're gonna get majority of the reels everybody from the long form pieces of content. Right. So my Instagram has grown tremendously. I would say I've, I've almost doubled since the, starting the podcast. Yeah, I mean, I would say so. Yeah. Because like we've had a few that have just gone crazy. It's gone crazy. On reels. And I'm not, I, and this is why I say, I'm not making the content. We're just, I'm just being the content. We're just taking a moment from the conversation that could stand all by itself. Now, it is important that you grow in, I mean, maybe, maybe you don't have to grow in this. You can have somebody else, but you want the clips to make sense. Again, right. we're not, I'm not just spraying out clips out there. We, I'm actually putting out good, high-quality content uh, that stands alone, that alone says a lot. But just as far as the work goes, it's very minimal because I've already shot the conversation, right? And a lot of these podcasts that I'm doing, we're probably getting around you know, anywhere between five to 12 reels that come from him. And even when I don't post them all, um, they still, that now I have a backlog of stuff, you know, that I can always re up on. And, um, but the way I'm going to hit my seven to 10 reels is majority, uh, by podcast clips. I'm going to do it by talking head reels. Like I'm actually going to sit dedicated, talk, sit down and do dedicated talking head reels. Um, there are times where I'm doing coach calls or, uh, online interviews or when I'm giving game, anytime I'm giving game, whether it's on stage on a virtual interview um, you know, doing a coach call, I'm, I'm, I'm taking what's out here and it's coming out of my mouth. There's always going to be a camera rolling yep. and that always poses the opportunity too to be able to use that as reels content. And sometimes if I break down something that maybe takes 10 minutes, I got a long form upload as well. So just think about the opportunities. A lot of people miss out on the opportunities of times where you're already producing content and you just need to turn on a camera. I have a friend who owns a brokerage. Actually, he, he'll probably do the podcast pretty soon here. His name's Steve Panate. Let's go. He had a, started a brokerage uh, in July, already has 50 agents. and Insane. Which is wild. Insane. <laughs> but he, he, does, he does a thing called Mindset Mondays and, every Monday yeah. and then Workshop Wednesdays. Yep. And he doesn't, he records it for reels, but he doesn't like record it to like release long form content or mm -hmm. take the audio and just upload it. And so, you know, he actually just needs to, you know, either go live on YouTube or just upload the long clip and just, anyway, most people are doing things like that. If you're doing a, a lead, you know, a team leading leadership uh, or a leadership team meeting, if you're, if you're, if you feel like you're tapping into a deeper something and delivering that, just film it in 2024. Um, you know, another thing with, with reels is just behind the scenes stuff. It works really well. You know, yeah. don't don't feel like it always has to be more than you just filming yourself do your thing too. When I say behind the scenes or BTS, that's like just showing everything that's going on. Like if you're if you're meeting with a client, like get a phone tripod and just hit record and shake your client's hand and sit down at the table and sign those papers and then kill the recording. And then literally you have a a post that's going to like add a uh, credibility to you because you're actually doing what it is you say you do. You meet with clients, yep. you, you get deals signed, you, you help them go to the next level. Someone who does this really well is yeah. your friend, Neil Gingra. So if, you know, if you guys don't know who that is, just go to Instagram and search Neil home, but he does not nah, like dude, go to episode <laughs> 12 of the department podcast. Right, also. Yeah. <laughs> no. But no, he does that really well on yeah. his Instagram. And he's always doing something also on his story. So like, we'll get into that, but yeah, yeah. he's no, a good example. So good. And I, I actually like when, when I first brought on art, cause we, we have a lot of history. I used to be his youth leader back in the day. Yep. If you don't know what that means, that means like we went to a church, there was these things called small groups yes. and me and my wife 
uh, we led middle schoolers, taught them the Bible, yes. we hung out with them, and we just wanted them to know that following Jesus is not lame. So and Omar's cool. known me since I was 11 years old. Yeah, that's wild. That's 10 years. That's wild. That's but crazy. I'll say all that to say, when I brought on art, I gave him, I didn't, I, I don't know how to write job descriptions. I didn't want to use ChatGPT like I did with Abigail's uh, job description. <laughs> Dang, Abby, you're automated. <laughs> I know. Thank you, AI. No, but art, I just said, hey, here's your job description. Make me look cool. Just make me look cool. Yeah. If I'm hopping on an airplane, film yeah. me on your phone. If I'm saying what's up to somebody, film me on your phone. If he's if eating lunch, film. <laughs> if he's at his house getting dressed, film. <laughs> if he's on the couch, film. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of footage. Golf, film. <laughs> yeah. No, facts. Because because marketing, marketing the... Okay, more than that. When somebody sees the angle of you not holding the camera or not in front of the camera... There's a level of psychological, um, what is it, pedestalism. That's not even a word. <laughs> but like people people put you on a higher pedestal when somebody's filming you. It's like, dang, this person walks around with a video crew. Like yeah. that's the conversation that happens in your head when you have somebody else filming you. This is why I don't, I'm not too concerned when it's, it has to be a, a fancy camera. Yeah. Like sometimes it's like if somebody pulls up to the studio, what's going to happen? I'm going to give them dap. Right. right. <laughs> but if he's just filming me, give somebody dap coming out of a black suburban. Yeah. It don't matter who you are. You look cool. Like, but like, it's not the idea to fake it or create this oh, false no, image. But that's really happening. Because like, it's really your life. Right. And it's, it's just showing I'm really people. getting on Southwest airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, but it's showing people that like, you're doing your thing and it's just building authority right. on your page. And I, I mean, that's just something that you could, you know, I, and if you think it's weird, I would say lean into the awkward weirdness. But literally have your assistant yeah. or have if if somebody was coming to meet you for a date, like like hit record on your camera and say hi to them and then kill the recording and then put if the you phone need in your to pocket. Fake it yeah. till you make it. No facts, dude. I mean, don't let other people dude, you're good at what you do. So do what I do. <laughs> I um okay. So, um here here is now the I mean still on Instagram, right? Um I'm going all in on Instagram stories in 2024. And when I say that, I mean, I'm not going to hesitate to share what's on my mind, to show what I'm doing, to talk about something I, go, I got going on. Um, I was a little bit timid this year with Instagram stories as far as um, just, you know, when I have a thought, you know, and, and I realize that I'm not, I'm, I'm not, a, I don't, I don't want to sound kind of like cocky, but what? I'm not an average human being. Like, okay. I care a lot about spiritual leadership, family. You are set apart. Dead, uh, you know, like development. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess. And so, so my insecurities have, have prohibited me or have uh, paralyzed me from being just more open on stories, just sharing my thoughts, you know? Right. But more than that, just having conversations. Again, Neil Dingra, amazing at this. Hey, you know, it's funny how people do this, you know, and it has nothing to do with your business. But if there's anything I learned from him and even like Shalene Johnson, it's, it's that, stories create trust yeah because again you're showing up consistently and by the unedited version of you mm -hmm. or the unpolished version of you it'll bring more uh intimacy and connection with your yeah, audience stories can be very raw mm -hmm. and it makes it feel personal yeah yeah I, I there was a there was a girl recently um in my coaching program who said you know one of the biggest reasons why she didn't post this much this year is because she had a hard time balancing you know running the business and posting on you know content and I said, yo, don't see it as two, see it as one, right? So if you, if you did something in your business and you didn't actually film yourself do that thing, just talk about that thing. So just take out your phone. I like using the rear facing camera because it looks better. And I'll say, yo, I just got off the phone with this person who's going to book a dialed in a day service with me. And you know what's, what I find with most of these people is that they just absolutely don't know what they're doing. And you know, when they, when they get hung up on things, it's going to prevent them from blah, blah, blah. So pay for speed. I want to encourage you to pay for speed. Like I, I just, I didn't film me on the call, but I just talked about the call. Yeah. So just, I, I think the word is invite, invite right. people into your business daily using Instagram stories. Yeah. It's like your life is content. Right. It's, yeah. it's kind of like a, a, a given, like it's, it's so such low hanging fruit. As long as you're breathing, you can create stories like if you have a day off maybe don't do it on the day off i don't i mean 
lead with your convictions. But if you have a day off, you could talk about what you're doing on your day off. I mean, right. it doesn't, it literally doesn't matter. Um, yeah. And then the last thing on Instagram, cause this is kind of my content game plan for the year, as you can probably tell, um, is just to be more active in the DMS, just like have more conversations. Another reason why I brought on Abigail is so she can help me with these conversations, just because a lot of people are engaging with this stuff, but it usually just ends with like a, Hey, thanks for sharing, which by the way, if somebody shares your content, reply and say, thank you. I appreciate you for sharing. I even, even just take a moment. Like, uh, I actually copy paste, appreciate you with exclamation point, And I just paste it, send, paste it, send, paste it, send, or you can actually use many chat. We can actually probably start doing that. <laughs> but I honestly, it's me saying, thank you. Right. Uh, and what it usually does is it starts a conversation. Nah, man, thank you. Yeah. Oh, dude, I appreciate you. Yeah. I'll keep it going. I don't know if you can be more active in the DMS. You're already pretty yeah. active. <laughs> More like, activity like on, in the DMs. Twenty twenty. Communicate. It says that it just came in two minutes ago and it's already read. And that just and means I'm replied, on my phone too much. <laughs> that's to what it. that means. <laughs> um, that's funny, but yeah, that's. I mean, it's just something uh, I wanted to make sure that we we do more of because that's just where the, the really like the goal is to reach the people on these platforms and then, in all honesty, to get them off the platform in something you know some CRM or. Um, somewhere else, whether it's just grabbing their email, which I'll talk about that in a, in a moment. Um, but just, I hope we just kind of just talked about Instagram and how so much of Instagram is going to be from already doing other things, right? So it's like, I want you to think about Instagram that way next year. Just, just invite people to what it is you're already doing. If you're doing something, either make sure it's filmed or if you don't film it, or if you do film it, just talk about it. Talk about what you just did. And I promise the more you post, the more people engage. It's just increasing the like of the the probability of somebody engaging with your account is just putting out more content. It's it's funny, right? It's like that's why I have a lot of people who join my coaching program. They oftentimes are like, "Dude, I posted this thing and a lead came in and then I made money." It's like, bet. <laughs> what would have happened if you didn't post it? I wouldn't get that lead and money wouldn't come in. So it's 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 highly connected. Yeah. Um, okay. So. And then the, the next thing I mentioned I'm going to do is I'm going to be sending a lot more emails. I'm kind of archaic in this, or maybe this is an archaic strategy that still works that I'm learning as a, a young millennial. Okay, chill. Like I, I can make videos, but like writing emails is kind of like a new thing, you know? So here's how I plan on actually writing up emails. And I shout out to Annabelle Ingleton um, for giving me this idea. But for every reel that I upload on Instagram, especially ones that perform well or have good engagement or I just feel like are good emails, they're just going to be retranscribed into an email. And Abigail is going to be helping me with that. So yeah. again, using content to allow us to send out more content. And I understand that one thing about showing up consistently in somebody's inbox is, is, is also, again, credibility and legitimacy. When you see somebody showing up in your email inbox consistently, even if you don't click on their emails and and you just you don't unsubscribe just because it's fine, it just it's just a touch point, right? But but using the data that we are getting from the reels to make it you know a good headline, um, and and if and if it's good reels content and it resonates, that's going to be great copy. Yeah. So it's all getting repurposed. Yeah, and and I I wanted to break this down so that you could see the picture that it really all started with the YouTube videos. Yep. Right. So it all started with making the podcast, cutting the clip from the podcast, uploading that to reels. And then it goes crazy, taking that reel, turning it into a, uh, a, uh, email. And then sometimes if the email makes sense to have just a simple call to action, Hey, if this is you and you want to, you know, grow your personal brand this year, then book a call with the team. Yep. You know, it's like, it won't hurt, but like there's value from that email itself, which is really cool. Um, what else with email? Yeah, the the weekly podcast. If you're putting out content, one given email is your newsletter. Hey, here's the new podcast, or here's the new YouTube video. And by when I say here's the new YouTube video, use a little bit of applic apply yourself a little bit so people would click on that headline. Um, something I learned about copy is it, it, literally even in this last year is 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 be selfish for the person that would read or consume your content. So a lot of times Abby will give me, um, you know, a, a, a version of something 
And then I just, the, the usually the more spin that I put on it is simply just making it more selfish for the person because people inherently are selfish and you can use human nature to your advantage in that. So if people are selfish and they're only looking for what is best, what what's in it for them, then use that to your advantage as a marketer or as a content creator or as an entrepreneur, right? And this is, this, it kind of goes into sales. It's like, using what people say. So actually when I have conversations with people and they, they, they tell me their frustrations when it comes to creating content, I take out my phone and I write, not in front of them all the time, when, when I walk away, I'll write down exactly how they said it. Man, uh, I just, you know, literally just a couple of days ago, um, I met somebody who's in real estate and she, she loves my content, but like she was saying like, I just, I'm so frustrated at my lighting. Like I would not use those th that term, right? So so now I can use number number one that females have a hard time lighting themselves because they number one they want to look really good. I they, get that. Yeah, they, so do I. They care more. They care more, sure. And but but there's a way they want to be lit. So like, I can literally probably reach a lot of females by making content simply about lighting females, and how you know frustrated with your lightings, ladies. Oh my gosh, that email is getting clicks. And I'm going to say, how do, how do you light yourself like this? We'll use these lights and then click on this link if you want access to this lights. So that'll just be such an easy connection. It's a good email. I'm yeah. Write it down. <laughs> write it down. Let's go uh, <laughs> no, but honestly, that, that came from a conversation. So I think here's the bar. Allow your copy to come from conversations. And so what, what does it mean for you? This means you should be listening. I don't think people are listening enough. Everybody wants to say their piece, but you're not listening. And people are giving you what they need by telling you their frustrations, their pain points, their mistakes, their um, you know, their frustrations. So, like, if you want to be a better content creator, if you want to be better at creating content next year, listen, listen to the feedback, listen to the people, and um, and and that's the I would say that's the ultimate form of service that you're able to give as a entrepreneur who creates content is making helpful content that doesn't serve you, but serves other people. That's literally how I've gotten, I, I wrote it. I wanted to be like, I didn't want to say it like hardcore, but I've gotten around 18 million views last year across all my YouTube videos to include the videos I create for that channel, Think Media. And, and the reason why I'm able to get so many views is because I'm simply, helping people like i'm just getting at the end of a search I, so i understand how they search it they're not searching you know um what's there you know most people aren't searching where well, there are people searching this let me just give you an example i can make a video called best full frame camera for entrepreneurs or i can make a, a camera best camera for content creation you know or best camera you know sharp sharpest 4k camera for creating content that's what people are actually looking for they want a, a camera that's better than their phone yeah not necessarily a full frame camera you're like what's a full frame camera so like if by me saying what's the best full frame camera i'm gonna lose out from you actually watching that video because it's not using the language that you're using you know maybe it's even like um don't buy a camera instead buy this and it's like oh shoot because like i want i want i want you know, high quality stuff, well, to learn about buying a lens. Like most people don't know that a lens is actually what gives you um, a good look on your videos. It's not necessarily the camera. That's part of it, but it really is the lens. So don't buy a, don't buy a kit lens or a, the lens that gets included in a camera setup, which by the way, if you want access to everything that I use to, to create content in my yeah. business, uh, you can check out the video depth.co forward slash crispy. Yeah, crispy. Or just check out the link in the description. Literally, it's my it's my Google Sheets uh, document that I keep updated with everything that I use. Live, keep updated live. Yeah, so um, check that out if you'd like to. And then it actually is a funnel. It will lead you to a course called Start Your Studio, which is only 47 bucks, and it'll teach you how I actually make content using my smartphone um, as well as using uh, high-quality cameras and how to put it all together. Super invaluable. Okay, let's get into monetizing. I want to talk about how I plan on monetizing all from all the content. So we talked about your outputs. You're gonna do your YouTube drop, your audio drop, your reels, your stories, 
your emails, all from pretty much that one long video. Yeah. Put in the en- the effort in that one long video so that it can have quality life to the repurpose of it. So that's that's really what we're doing a lot of. We're, we're just repurposing, repurposing a lot of content. But here's essentially how um, we'll monetize. And all this is subject to change, by the way. I'm sorry, I should have led with that. Because like <laughs> social media, it's all testing. Yeah. Marketing is testing. So things can change as far as maybe increasing the outputs of long form or whatever, whatever would work for you. But even thing I can imagine things could change even with us. But this is going straight into 2024, what we're doing. But how we plan on monetize is uh, with low ticket education. So start your studio is a good example. It's yep. a $47 course. That's um, amazing. That's honestly, I used to charge a thousand bucks for it. So just it's a go. Steal. It's, it's, it's a, a steal. It's, it's a steal. It's like, why wouldn't you, you know? It's all you can eat sushi. You, you wouldn't because you because you're a bum. <laughs> okay. no, I'm just kidding. Chill. Oh. <laughs> that was intense. Okay. Viral clip. <laughs> no. And then another thing we'll be doing on a low, I, I, I would consider this low ticket is I'll be doing uh, either monthly or bi-monthly challenges where we'll be talking about how to create better content and how, how to convert content into customers. Uh, I'm thinking about calling it, I don't know, I'd like to know your guys' thoughts. What? All right. The 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 content cash flow challenge okay or the content conversion challenge i think i like ooh, cash flow cash flow sounds interesting to the people who like i don't know or or content like, to cash ooh, content, or, content, content to, cash. to cash is nice honestly they're all really good i think I think conversion is cool, but like, well, a lot of people like understand what that even yeah, means. Yeah, that's I don't true. Think, like, but then also, like, the people who do understand or... what conversion means right. are the people you want. For sure. So, frick, I don't know. I like Con- content to cash. Content, content to cash. cash. I think that's pretty solid. Kind of, yeah, because I do want a lot of people to join. Yeah. Anyway, low ticket offer will be the content to cash <laughs> challenge. Dope. It'll be a ninety-seven dollar general admission and a one ninety-seven VIP ticket, which will allow you to get um, Q and A time with me. Which is and, super invaluable. Yeah. And so if that's actually running, there'll be a link uh, always in the description. And there might be a link, honestly, right now. Right now. Why Why not? Why not? Because um, I'll probably do one at the end of January. So that's the content to cash challenge. Um, Going to be monetizing with coaching consulting. Uh, my coaching program is to help entrepreneurs really understand the how-to of everything we're talking about. This is why I can talk about it with like very minimal notes because I've been doing this for over a year and um, I I actually think it's the greatest content coaching program because not a lot of content coaches have been doing content creation for over 15 years. I've literally been doing this since high school and then have amassed millions of views, um, millions of subscribers. And so that's what, that's one way. The third way is going to be doing workshops. We'll be doing more workshops here in Las Vegas, here at the studio. Excited for those. Yeah, which that'll look like about 10 to 15 people, a full day of learning and actual like custom strategy, um, like kind of like actual workshop moments. Yeah. And then what we'll also do is we'll also be doing like shooting, you know, I because a lot of times there's like a there's a gap between people who want to like start creating quality content and like when they actually start getting there and posting it and the workshop will shorten the gap. It'll right. just be like you come here for two days. And I and you get a month's worth of content yeah. to just crush with here at the video department. Yeah, by the way, another one will be our done in a day uh, service, which is a really cool opportunity. If you uh, and currently at the time, if you would like to come to Las Vegas and spend a day with the team, get access to all this gear, and I'll even do a thirty minute strategy session if you're down. Um, th- this is called done in a day, where you're getting four long form videos. This is actually a perfect ad read for exactly what this like thing is. No, honestly. You're going to get everything we talked about for ad, for a month. So right. I, four ad reads or four ad reads, <laughs> like two hour day, not even. So you're going to get four long form videos, whether that's going to be interviews or talking head videos, up to you. Um, and then we're going to shoot 20 to 30 reels. And then we're going to also work on just kind of future uh, video ideas and things like that. So um, I would say it's the most invaluable offer. Uh, dude, all, my, all the offers are invaluable. I'm sorry. Yeah, they really There's are. There's a little bit of a bias, but it's genu- like it's actually legit. Everybody says I charge too little. Yeah, that's kind of the main. Bias. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna live in that. 
and that's okay. So if you're if you're down, if you want to lock in before prices go nuts, I mean, I don't know. And then next is brand deals and sponsorships. I've been reached out to by several brands and even brand um, kind of like peop, you know brand agencies. And based on the amount of views that I get on this podcast and listens and the type of people that watch it, bro, we can go freaking multiple six figures on these brand deals, cuh. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, no, for real. Um, I'm excited. And I have a, a few people helping me with that. Something I wish I did more of this year. I wish I emailed more. I wish I gave more call to actions. Yep. I wish I did a challenge or two or three. And I wish I shared more testimonies. Yes. Yes. Um. And so because I because I'm just I took a moment to reflect and kind of write that down. I would like you to do that as well. Like what are some things you wish you did more of? And 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 then ask us a question why? Yeah. You know, why didn't I send more emails? Actually drop one of those in the comments. Yeah. Would love yeah. to know which one you wish you did more of. Was it post more content? Was it don't go in too intense, but if you should have showed up for your family more, maybe <laughs> <laughs> just get super deep. Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't put out that much email because I didn't really. I thought emails had to be so polished, but I realized that no, they're just literally like, like text messages or like thoughts. So just send send out ideas and thoughts and yeah. observations. I mean, well, one is that you know you do wish you charged more. Isn't that one thing you wish you did, or no? Uh, I don't regret that. No. Okay. okay. It's the growth. It's the the skill. Yeah. The skill is slowly growing, and and the more testimonies I get to, I feel like it will allow me to charge more. And um, yeah, I wish I did more call to actions on Instagram. I think you know selling has been a skill that I've been growing in this year. I think, um, and I can, I want to continue to grow in, but just you know really separating the idea of sales being salesy or being a sleazy, and sales being more service leaning into that more and knowing that when i do invite people to come hang out with me for a few days uh in las vegas or um or me going out and consulting you know i, I consulted a few churches this year but i never talk about it it's kind of like yeah you know it's just again it's like a thing that i'm trying to get over i want to do more of i think insecurity is a little bit of that play or is why i say i hold back um challenges i think it's because i think it's a it's a feat but i know i just need to Go ahead and do it. Sharing testimonies. That's another reason. I I I I've, I get testimonies every day, but I don't share them. And it's because I don't want to, I don't know. I I I feel like I I feel like it's self it's like a you know, look at me type 100% thing. One hundred percent a limiting belief. Yes, I know. And then I, you know, I've been told that it it testimonials and testimonies unlock the ability for someone that doesn't look like me to hear it from someone else that I've helped them. It's like, oh, if he can help them, he can help me. So I'm- I'm, I'm DM Annabelle right now. Why? Oh. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and then I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for uh, my son coming. And uh, you can hear it in my voice. He's here <laughs> no. right now. I know, look, the Amanda just texted me. No, uh, no, excited for that. Excited for the family to grow and to just go for it. You know, I got, I have this new c content quadrant that I'm kind of teaching people in my community. Um, and it, it's it's kind of everything flows from these four, you know, um, pillars that I've identified. It's kind of, be, it, I believe the content quadrant is gonna be kind of like Dave Ramsey's baby steps. You guys know about Dave Ramsey baby steps? I know who Dave Ramsey is. Well, I don't know his baby steps, I know, but I know. First you yeah. pay off your debt. <laughs> yeah, one that's one. <laughs> You guys should look at his, or you should know it, because if there's a journey. See, this is why I get I hire millenn uh, young Gen, <laughs> Gen Z. Z. All right, check this out. Your the goal is to be debt free. Okay. Okay. But how do you get there? Do you guys have a a thousand dollar emergency fund right now? Yes. A thousand dollar emergency fund. Yeah. Okay. I think yes. that's like step two. Okay. What? Yeah. So it's like step one is like you know. I thought that was step one. I actually got to look. I think step I one get it. is pay off all your debt. But and then that, number two, you build up a six month. No, but the the, the thousand emergency dollar emergency fund comes sooner. It's first. Yeah. Okay. And then but you, it's not even you. And then you slowly <laughs> build that six month reserve. Okay. And then you start to invest. But you and pay then off your debt. You start to first. all that the the debt the debt snowball that that's like you slowly attack it. I don't think it's like. 
I could be wrong. I don't think it's he's I'm not, I'm not a dead guy. It's because I see all these like little Dave Ramsey TikToks. Yeah. And he's like, you're going to be eating beans and rice for the next two years. So all your cars, Ooh. So your house. All right, here we go. All right, everything. baby steps. Here we go. Number one, save $1,000. Okay. Okay. Number two, Dumb. pay off all your debt, except what? for the house. Okay. Number three, save three to six months. See, I know this because I live, I, I, this is embedded in me. Okay, but you had to look it <laughs> I just up. forgot because I'm, I'm so above this. <laughs> okay. okay, okay. Uh, step four, I'm just kidding. Invest 15% of your income for retirement. Okay. Step five, stay for college, save for college. That needs to change. Yeah, what? Um, but it's okay. Do what you got to do. You know. Step six, pay off the house. Step seven, build wealth and give. Is pay off all your debt a goal? Like, uh, I thought some debt is good it, debt. Except the house, he says. You don't have to pay okay. off your house. He would say be aggressive with it. Long story short, the idea is, yes, there are there is good debt. And I don't subscribe to 100% of what Dave Ramsey says yeah. because it's he's he's really for people who don't have self-control in their finances. But that's another conversation for another day when we have Dave Ramsey on the department. Yes. Um, but that is the content strategy that I believe you can implement in your business Um Literally, in 2024, starting week one of January. And if you need to batch content, batching means you sit down and deliver uh, or record multiple pieces of content so you don't have to think about it. But some people have, you have slide decks you've been sleeping on. You made presentations before. Like, whip those things out and start full yeah. sending it. Yeah, I mean, just a question. Like, if these someone's- These are cool pants. Thanks. Are those new? These are Abercrombie. I've had these for so a So they while. were $130. No, I thrifted them. Bro, Abercrombie is- inflation Unreal. yeah af okay but question so for someone who's saying that like i can do this like this little content strategy that you just talked about but like editing is the biggest thing um even with cutting up clips um maybe they understand to just leave the long form alone but i don't know like what would you say to like someone that's, that's like editing is my biggest thing i don't want to pay for an editor i don't want to do it myself like what do i do <laughs> You pay for an editor, you, <laughs> you do, do it yourself. yourself. <laughs> no, you I mean, that's art, honestly real. Yeah. Art gives you a cap cut tutorial. Hey. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I would say, okay, so here's how I would do it. If if I wanted to do bare minimum content creation and still be effective, number one, you'd have to get really good at communicating because if you don't have gnarly edits to be able to retain attention for a long period of time, you want to be good at talking. Yeah. Like, okay, so let's just say you are though. Okay, right. so I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna record a 10 minute YouTube video okay. straight out of camera. I'm gonna use props too. I'm gonna write it on sticky notes, my okay. tips, or maybe use a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, I'm gonna literally take that SD card, take that file, I'm gonna upload it to YouTube, and then boom, release the YouTube video. Okay. Okay. Uh, obviously, you wanna make a thumbnail, so use Canva to make a thumbnail. That's pretty simple. Yeah. Or don't, right? Uh, yeah, like, or don't. Let's just yeah. say, yeah, we're talking about just doing it, but I mean, just spending the 30 minutes to make a thumbnail would be worth your time though, in right. my opinion. But do, oh, yeah. yeah, don't make a thumbnail. Just get a really juicy title and you do that by finding maybe an article um, or previous YouTube videos that you can kind of tweak the, you know, what's already working. If you search something in Google and you put article, see what articles are out there and then, or book titles. You know, I, I use a lot of book titles and reframe them into the type of content I'm producing. So you're just gonna shoot that video, not even edit it. I didn't even say edit it. You're just gonna upload it straight to YouTube. Okay, you're gonna take that video file, you're gonna upload it to Opus Clips. Opus Clips is an AI uh, software or it's a web-based software. You just upload a long piece of video, a long piece of content. Mm -hmm. It'll cut up 10 clips. Okay. These clips won't be perfect, mm -hmm. but they'll be dang near postable. Yeah. At least three to five of them will be. It's noted that you do get one free uh like run through but then like it's a paid thing i think there's i mean i think it's one a week or something it's like a Is limited it? yeah oh okay. so you, you could do it more than once for free but i mean if it's working for you and it's ai then you should probably pay for it um so then you're gonna take the ai clip and then you're gonna throw it in there mm -hmm. okay um if you're really lazy <laughs> because like the, the the opus is gonna be able to caption it's gonna give you the cut and then you literally just download it and you have the file airdrop it to your phone or send yeah. it to your phone and then post it. And you could take that same file, upload it to something like Podcastle or Descript. So these are uh, another, these are other web-based softwares where you can upload video or audio to and then literally transcribe it. And so now you got your email and you can just take that, throw it in a chat GPT and just be like, turn this, turn this, 
you know, paragraph into an email copy with whatever, 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 like literally it's, it's just yeah. happening. So no, no excuses. Mean, yeah, uh, that sounds like send that email. What yeah. else? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the flow. Like, yeah. I mean, you can't really replace too much, but that's a lot of help that you can actually implement. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're trying to keep it lean and you want to use, uh, AI to, um, accomplish these yeah. output goals. If you didn't want to use AI though, like, you know, the clips. Which one is it, dude? No, no, you no. You want to hire somebody? No, because you I want to use AI. Because, <laughs> like, I tried to get this answer out of you. It was like you were just uploading moments as reels and just using Instagram captions. And then that was it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's also like. But you still got to. Yeah. I mean, Opus, I guess you got to find the moment. Yeah. And I still take do that. It and like with, it. with Opus clips, you don't have to use the captions. That's true. You can literally use Instagram reels to. To just you know put the auto generated captions. There's yeah. so many resources and tools, and like yeah, and CapCut super easy. You could throw your long form video in CapCut and just slice, that and then up. just slice it, and um, and yeah, and 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 just be. And here's what's gonna happen because you're gonna be posting more in 2024. That rhyme. Okay, <laughs> I, I was waiting for one of you guys to be like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> not <up. laughs> yeah. Um, is um is you're probably going to consume content differently because you're going to be watching how people do things because you're doing it now. You know, I, when I read a hundred million dollar offer before I even ever had an offer, it made no sense to me. And then I had an offer for about a year that I was selling and I was like, I came up with it. Then I read it again and I was like, Oh my goodness, it makes much, so much more sense. So now because you're posting more in 2024, you are going to get so much, you're going to be watching content uh, with more intention and it's going to make you better at content creation. Yeah. And that is the content game plan slash strategy for 2024. This breakdown of what people could do for editing just caused people to <laughs> pay for an editor. <laughs> they should. Okay. Question for you. Yeah. So you've been at this for a minute. So when you first started, were you as confident as you are today? Heck no. Definitely Cause not. I, I could see somebody watching this video and in their mind, your videos are the standard, you know, the confidence that you bring in everything. So, so what helped you along this journey to just be able to come in and just film, you know? Right. Yeah, that's really good. I think it is the amount of outputs. Mm -hmm. So like, I feel like at this point I have well over like long form videos on YouTube. I would say I'm, I'm well over 350 long form videos that had, you know, concept to completion. You could probably tack on another 800 from videos I've shot and slash edited when I was producing videos. And I would say it has, it was, it's the volume that allowed me to become more confident and realizing more and more that the more content I put out that actually helps genuine helps people, it actually builds your confidence because you're like, oh my goodness, I thought it didn't. Those things that you thought it that wasn't happening actually are happening. And then that also builds confidence. And then I would say it's like actually being a student. Like I I don't talk past my season. I stay in my lane. And they say that competence yields confidence. So a lot of people are not confident on camera because they a lot of times they're talking about things they don't they shouldn't be talking about yet. Like there's no reason for you to talk about you know be an intra- entrepreneur, you know, um, you know, uh, inspirational entrepreneur to other entrepreneurs. Like that's so I'm not even necessarily trying to be that. I think that's happening because I've just stuck in my lane. But yeah, I would say uploading more, and then ultimately it was watching back my videos. So like. I'm a weirdo. Bro, I watch my stuff back, dude. I still catch stuff. Like, yeah. like even after an edit goes live, I will still scrub through a little bit and see how I like answered questions. I'm I'm reading comments and like, but more than that, I'm like like a like a professional basketball player would watch their game tape. Dude, I always watch myself back. And so I don't just stop there. I then make the necessary improvement from the thing that I noticed. And so over time, that I think has yielded a confidence. And, um, and then the, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm starting to like ramble, but I, I even think about people who like, there is, there is such thing as a good enough. 
Like, and I learned that with, with practical tech gear reviews, that there's a good enough, as far as a, a delivery goes, like as far as the output goes. And, and because I've unlocked that and I've realized how I can get to that good enough, then I know that if, if it takes 30% of me to produce that video to a good enough place, that means my skill has gone, gone, you know, crazy, but I don't need to, maybe people will start disagreeing with me. I don't need to give it a hundred percent every time. Right. Yeah. Like, and we're talking about practical long form videos. Like I've made tutorials. Like if somebody's learning how to do something and they're trying to learn how to do this one thing in the edit in Adobe Premiere, I don't need to over explain. I don't need, I just need to keep, keep it actually simple. Right. So the skill is actually making it more simple but the more competence you grow in and then the, the ability to make it simple to digest for an individual, it actually starts to become easy for you. Cause then you're just, you're still like sharing your expertise, but you're sharing it in a way that's so, so much more easier than how you understand it. Which is why I would say growing in communication is probably one of the skills that everyone should be top three every year, you know? Mm -hmm. And is would that? you say that's how you did that growing in communication? Just, constantly watching myself filming, yeah, yeah. Reviewing. and then also we'll also have my pastor on um actually he said this week he'll he can probably shoot so that's cool Sick. do but you read a lot of books i used to <laughs> <laughs> i actually want to read more this year yeah but i found books get very repetitive i don't know that's personally Most it's like people only read up to 30 pages of a book oh, and wow. then they stop you know what i do it is I read the cover and a lot of times the cover tells me what the book's about. <laughs> like there's this book, you know, uh, is it Dan Sullivan? Um, there's this book called who not how. So like my friend was like, nah, yeah, book who not how it's like awesome entrepreneur book. Haven't read it. I own it, but it's because That's I know awesome. what it's about. <laughs> Omar, you need to read who not how, why? Because it's about who not how. Okay. I don't need to read it. <laughs> Dude, that's so ignorant. But reading helps you, though. No, it, it does. And I would no, say... No, there's for sure well, stuff in the book that well, would help you. You yeah. read your Bible. Yeah. And yeah, I read, I read my Bible every day. Yep. And you do grow more. A proverb a day keeps the devil away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we do, I have a fat stack that I do want to uh, tackle this year. I just don't want to get caught up in... Just because you can read this book and it tells you to do this. And you can read this book and it tells you to do this. And then it's just like, you be, you know... Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not to... That's no excuses. But yeah, just... Watch yourself back and, and make those improvements. 1% better with every upload, with everything. I'm always, and, and, and then it's just learning how to just know when to just let it go, like let it happen, you know? I feel like that's like, they say that there, there's like a, you know, the, the, the person that edited Star Wars, I forget his name, but they say that like, you never finish an edit, you abandon an edit, which means that, you can you could spend all day fine tweaking and doing perfection, you know, like making it perfect. But it really comes to a point where you just need to be like, "This, this, this is, is good. good. Like, this is good. I'm let's going just send to it. yeah, send it." As Gen Z would say, <laughs> "Yeah, amen." So that's what would help. I think that's a, that's helped me be more confident. Bet. Cool. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. Um, whether you listen or watch, that'd be appreciated. Check out the links in the description. Appreciate you. Thank you for watching or listening to this podcast. It's an honor to have a really cool podcast.